Get out the insurance cards, get out the co-pays. The office is open, my friends. Brought to you by DrRoto.com. It's time once again for everybody to come aboard that Green Screens Media train. Recording live from somewhere. This is One and Done, your fast break of college basketball information on tonight's show. Me and two and the best in the business will continue our journey across the landscape of college basketball this preseason by hitting the Southern Conference and the Southland Conference as well. Thank you for joining us tonight here on One and Done. I am the conductor of the aforementioned Green Screens Media Train. My name is Jay Heinrich. You can follow me on Elon's Hellhole at Dr. William Cannon, and I will not waste any time getting to my broskies in basketball, starting with Eric the Blue. You can find him in those Twitter streets at Fantasy Nav. He is the Baron of Bread of Green Screens Media. That is Eric Romoff. What's happening? And we are uh, we're winding down from a busy week one of the NFL season, and this is the time where we come onto these live streets and remind you all that college basketball is less than two months away. We are gearing up, getting ready for the tip off of the season. And that means that we are, I think, I think it's official. Can, can I announce it? Our, our top 20 countdown of the top returning players in college basketball. The list is complete. We're going to start running down those previews and spotlighting the best players returning to the game and make sure that you are subscribed here on YouTube. So you don't miss a single minute of that, I think. I think we're going to start to drop those next week. So you uh, better keep a keen eye out so you don't miss any of the work that we're putting out there. Yeah, make sure you're liking and subscribing here on the YouTube channel or on Twitter at Get Green Screens and at One And Done CBB. All spelled out is the show page. Also, over on TikTok at Get Green Screens as well. That top 20 countdown will be there with my guy, El Capitan himself. He is the captain of the Green Screens Media Ship. That is the OG Money Mike. Find him on X at MCHolland34. That is Mr. Mike Holland. What it do, baby? What it do? I've been promising this betting article for what seems like two, three weeks now. So I'm sure our fans are, are pretty upset. But I have a plan that it is going out tomorrow. So... Check that out. It'll be on drroto.com. You can also find my transfer big board. Other articles will be dropping there. Hey, it's for free. Who doesn't like free stuff? And uh, you know our guy at The Real Napier, Chris, is uh, helping us out, continuing to grow this thing. So shout out to him. Going to be helping with the top 20 countdowns, been helping with the show sheets, all these fun segments that we've been doing, a lot of social media content. Uh, As we continue to grow, he'll help in other capacities as well. So it's been a lot of fun, and I am ready to uh, to drive down to the Dirty South and see what these two conferences are all about. Dirty South. Can y'all really feel me? Make sure you're following all these uh, handles on Twitter that you see on the screen, as well as the show page and the Green Screens Media page as well right there, flashing up on your screen right on cue. Make sure you do that and hit those notification bells so you don't miss any of the conference previews we have coming up. But tonight... Starting with the SOCOM, the old Southern Conference, a 10-team league. Last year, gentlemen, and ladies watching, of course, with us, uh, regular season, Furman and Samford were the co-champs at 15-3, and three, double domination, if you will. And in the conference tournament, to get that, that, uh, that uh, bid, easy for me to say, for March Madness, Furman defeated Chattanooga 88-79 to in the title game there. And then... Messed up a few brackets. Shocking number four, Virginia, 68 to 67 with a miracle steal in three. Pretty sure Stan Van Gundy was on the call for that one and, and about peed his pants because he didn't, wasn't used to that excitement of college basketball. However, it ended there, and this conference was ranked 20th at the end of the season by Ken Palm's rankings. One team inside that top 100, which was – Furman. So let's get to these headlines. And as always, let's start with our guy, Eric. What should we know about the SOCOM? Yeah. So you, uh, you detailed that, uh, that, that, that NCAA run that, uh, that first round upset that Furman pulled off and 
you know, while they were clearly the class of this league last year, feels like heading into this season, the conference is pretty wide open. Furman themselves, the Paladins lose both Bothwell and Slauson. Chattanooga's big star, Jake Stevens, is out the door. You know, other solid players and, and you know, uh, budding stars like BJ Mack from Wolford, Jordan King from ETSU, uh, Quest Glover from Samford. You know, these are these are guys that are all off to bigger programs. So, you know, there there will be a pretty clear favorite when, you know, when we talk about betting odds, assuming that Furman's going to be in that mix. But realistically speaking, I, I think that this this league could probably go just about any way. And the other thing to consider here is, you know, part of what's going to determine that is how how these newcomers will will fare in, in league play. Right. There's a ton of freshmen entering the league. You know, there's there's potentially you know, some some breakout promise from this group that could ultimately be, you know, what tips the balance when it's all said and done. And, you know, while that's the case, these these new players are coming into a, a pretty solid pool of returning guys, right? So, you know, we we we've got a we've got a pretty evenly distributed league as we sit here, you know, a little less than two months out. You know, some of these newcomers could potentially move the needle. You know, some of the returning players that that are that are coming back for another season that might be you know the, uh, the 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 little nudge over the edge that it takes, but ultimately, I, I think in the in the SoCon, we're looking at one that it's going to be competitive all the way down the stretch. And we're going to talk about these teams and put them into tiers as we always do on these conference preview shows. So we'll give you guys and gals watching a little bit better idea of of where we feel like these teams will land in the conference. But before we do that. Let's do a little new segment today. We're going to call Franchise Tags, players we want on our squad regardless of anything else going on in honor of the NFL opening week, Sunday, first Sunday of the season today. We're going to do some football-themed segments here today. And, of course, slapping that franchise tag is definitely an NFL thing. But for us, there you go. We got the little duel. Look at that graphic. How about that? Nice. And the little crossover, that's the that's the Came crossover your paycheck. we know that we need. Uh, <laughs> I'm not really surprised about that at all. Uh, but that's the collab that we didn't uh, we we didn't know that we wanted, but we actually need so badly here. And let's talk about these players in the SoCon. Let's start with uh, Trey Bonham here, guard from Chattanooga, who's transferred in from Florida. So one of those big dippers uh, down to the mid majors, six feet, 170 pounds, five and a half points. One dime in 13.4 minutes, just, you know, begging for, for some usage to, to show off what he can do at Chattanooga. Two years ago, was it VMI in this conference and averaged 14 and four dimes? So, Mike, the, the talent is there to, to succeed at this level, definitely. Absolutely. And I love that you brought that up. It's really been an up and down uh, kind of roller coaster ride for Bonham. Um, he started 13 games last year, but then he also fell out of the rotation. Uh, I do remember one DFS slate. I did fade him uh, on a start and he went off. So we know this guy's got the talent. Um, we know he can get it going at this level. So I expect him to be an absolute focal point of this new look roster for Chattanooga. Jake Stevens is gone. As Eric mentioned, there is a ton of usage to go around. Uh, obviously, you don't play the same position, but somebody's got to hoist up these shots. So I expect Bonham to get a lot of shots. And man, if I'm if I'm projecting, man, I'd like to see him get a like a 17 and five type year. So uh, yeah, I think he's going to be a key factor in what happens in this conference. Yeah, if he can if he can get 30 32 minutes a night, we might we might see that. Next there on our list, JP Pagese, guard from Furman, 6'1", 180 pounds, 12 points, three and a half boards, and almost four dimes in in that 32 minute range <laughs> that I was talking about wanting to see Bonham get uh, this year. He's already firmly entrenched in Furman history with the buzzer beater over Virginia in the tournament. Big time stuff. They're probably gonna, there's probably gonna be a big a statue <laughs> or something commemorating this guy, um, Eric, but uh, his play has, has reflected uh, the, the fandom for sure. Man, I was over here getting ready to to fire off the suggestion the blueprint that they <laughs> they meant to statue for this kid and here's here's jay just cutting me in line i mean look anytime you take a program like Furman and you have a buzzer beater that gets you through the first round against a team like virginia you know pagese is is absolutely part of Alador. and i think that you know we're gonna see you know him him ride that momentum he already had a lot building from his sophomore year we saw his minutes go from 12.6 all the way up to almost 32. 
obviously now he's he's got that momentum with the buzzer beater. Like we mentioned earlier, Bothwell's gone, so he projects to have the ball in his hand a lot more. You know, ultimately it, it feels like feels like there's a lot of things working in his favor. And, you know, we could be looking at a potential, you know, all conference caliber type of season out of Pagese. I don't imagine he'll be one of those players that will sit around all off season and have people tell him how awesome he is. I feel like this guy is going to be somebody that's going to want to take the next step. And we'll probably see that from Pagese uh, uh, this coming season. Jalen McCreary, the third player on our, on our list of franchise tag, we're slapping the franchise tag on Jalen McCreary here for our team in the SOCON. If we were making one forward from Mercer, 6'8", 225, 15.2 points, four, sorry, 5.4 rebounds in 24.2 minutes. Really solid stats there in just over 24 minutes a game. And speaking of leaps forward, Mike, this guy definitely took one last year. Absolutely. Well-traveled, started his career at South Carolina, so he had that recruiting pedigree in the SEC, um, then uh, went to USF, and now he's found a home here. So uh, as we uh, kind of mentioned, and, and Jay's been on the, the bandwagon of two-time, three-time, four-time transfers, uh, he is going to be on the court, but I don't think he can transfer again. Uh, he was third in the country in shot rate, third in the country in shot weight. So what's going to happen when he gets 30-plus minutes is uh, <laughs> going to be pretty dangerous as far as his scoring pedigree. Um, he's also excellent at taking care of the ball, and he's pretty good on the defensive end. So McCreary going to be a key cog once again for Mercer and, and a game changer in this conference. Keyshawn Langley, guard from UNC Greensboro, 6'1", 175, 14.3 points, 2.4 assists, and 1.8 steals in just about 30 minutes per Eric, looking uh, for a solid year, and this should load up to be a big year five for the smooth score, Eric. It is not rumored. It is not official. It is certified. This kid is a bucket, 42% from three last year, 83% from the free throw line. I mean, you you better you better heat check him. You gotta get you gotta get a body on him. He's averaging nearly seven threes per game. And while that's the case, he's also pretty solid at taking care of the ball, right? Not not getting not getting a lot of turnout turnovers out of him, but getting a lot of turnovers from him. He can poke a few away. And as he heads into his final year. I, I think we're going to see a ton of usage out of him. So he'll still fill it up, and it, it feels like there's a lot more that he can add in this last year. Last but certainly not least on our list is a first-team All-American name player and first-team All-Southern Conference name player as well, Vontarius Woolbright, so strong. Classy. The wing from Western Carolina, 6'6", 210 pounds, 14.5 points, 7.5 boards, 5 dimes, in 32 and a half minutes, my gosh, just salivating looking at that line. Mr. Do-It-All, Mike, poised for another monster season. Well, outside of the three ball, uh, there's really not much uh, this guy uh, can't do on the court. So he's got great size. He really uses it in every facet. I mean, you just look at the rebounding and assist totals um, <laughs> to go along with the scoring, and that really steps, you know, stands out. You know, what's scary is his production went up, but his efficiency also went up with it with the uh, extra six minutes that he got in year two. So you love to see that, right? Sometimes you see guys with more minutes, the efficiency goes down. His efficiency actually went up. Um, so there's still some room there uh, to, to shoot better from the floor. So just to watch out here, if he's put in the time and the work in the offseason, this is a guy that could challenge for conference player of the year. Um, I mean, that you know, I could see him going, you know, 16, 8, and 7, and that's terrifying. And you don't really see that much on the college level. Best name in the conference and could end up being the best player in the conference as well. That's Vontarius Woolbright, who joins the other four guys that we would place the franchise tag on in the SOCON. Trey Bonham, J.P. Pugis, Jalen McCreary, and Keyshawn Langley. Yeah, those are some, definitely some solid players. Yeah, we, you know, we talked about the, the teams overall not being ranked. The conference not being 20th, I think, is what we said earlier in the show. Not ranked super high. There's some talent here in this in this conference for sure let's go ahead and jump right in to our tiers here you know we love to do some tiers leave us a comment and let us know uh some some tiers we always do three tiers so if there's some tiers that you want us to use maybe throw, th throw these teams into some different tiers let us know some themes you might want us to use let us know what you think about some of these players in the socon that we've already talked about or just say hey if you're here hanging out with us so um yeah let's get to those tiers now guys with the football theme, sticking with the football theme. 
from down under in Lambo. You see the frozen it's tundra. Not, no, we're it's not. It's not like not anybody's doing. watching the Cowboy game. It's like thirty nine to nothing. So <laughs> <laughs> might as well might as well watch some tears. Did it, did it get that the, bad? The New York there's Giant tears. Twenty <laughs> nine. Yeah, there's the, there's definitely <laughs> some giant, giant fan tears, tears going on. Lambo. But that's not the tears we're talking about, gentlemen and ladies. <laughs> We're talking tears in the SoCon here, and let's start. We normally go in alphabetical order here, and we will do that again tonight. Let's start with the Chattanooga Bucks, 7 and 11 last year, Mike. Are they going to be right up at the top, touchdown? They're going to be right in the middle, solid first down, <laughs> or uh, is Chattanooga going three and out and, and, and punting? Ooh, uh, I'll go with a. Uh... First down, uh, disappointing year last year at 7-11 when you had, uh, you know, star Jake Stevens. Coach White's going into year two. He's bringing in some quality transfers like Bonham um, that we talked about. Jan Zadek's coming over from Pepperdine. He was a solid player there. Kai Statman, we didn't get to see much of him at Virginia, but a, a big dipper there. And I just think that this team outperforms what's probably going to be, you know, so-so expectations, lower expectations. So, I'll give the mocks a little bit of love, a 500 team here, and I'll go ahead and give them a first down. Eric, how about East Tennessee State? Where do you got those Buccaneers? I got the Buccaneers moving the chains with a first down. Look, 8-10 and 10 last year in league play. They have a brand-new head coach, Brooke Savage, coming in. Enters year one with a pretty solid roster overall. That includes junior, junior forward Jaden Seymour back for another solid year. Average nine and seven for them last year. And DJ DJ Hughes comes in as a down transfer for Butler. So, you know, while Coach Savage is in his first year, I think there's a lot of pieces that he can work with. And I, I like them to have a pretty solid year. Might not be in that touchdown tier yet, but a solid first down nonetheless. So um, let me live in the glory days here for a minute. Uh, we I, I played football. We weren't very good, but... Uh, the one game that we won my senior year, I intercepted the pass to seal it and ran out to midfield and did first down right there. And of course, got penalized. Uh, that I got. I don't think that I'd ever been at five pieces of yellow laundry thrown at me any quicker than that. But I, I have a, an affinity for the old first down signal because of that. And that is not where I'm going to put Furman. Those Paladins are going to be up in the touchdown tier. For me, what a year last year for Furman. As you mentioned earlier, uh, the only team in the top 100 uh, rankings in this conference. And, um, yeah, they lose Bothwell and Slauson, right? Like, there's no doubt about that. But they return a majority of their roster, including uh, Peggy's and uh, Peggy, excuse me, and budding star Marcus Foster. So let's go ahead and keep Furman right at the top of this conference Touchdown, Paladins. It feels kind of weird on one and done to be saying that. But, of course, we got that crossover today with the old football slang. So, uh, Furman up in the touchdown tier. Mike, where do those pesky Mercer Bears go? Oh, man. I guess I'll go right back down to moving the chains with Eric, man. I'll give him a first down. Six and 12, so they'll take a first down. Uh, we spotlighted McCreary. I'm looking for him to have a monster year if they get him over 30 minutes. Uh, guard Jock Kinones, uh, he looked good last year, and I expect him to take another step forward, so another solid piece. You know, Coach Gary's had this team nearly inside the top 150 uh, at times last year in defensive efficiency, so we know uh, you know, he's going to get it done on the defensive end, and that's going to keep him in games, and that's why I think they're going to come closer to 500 this year. Makes a lot of sense. Keep Mercer right there in the middle. Eric? Samford Bulldogs, we got to move. Touchdown, first down, or three and out? These Samford Bulldogs are good for six, especially after going 15 and three in conference play last year. Uh, they did lose some talent. They got guys like Glover and Die that are out the door. But forward Jermaine Marshall is back. He averaged 13 and seven for them last season. Six total seniors on the roster. You know how much I love to see those upperclassmen getting some additional run. And they, uh, they have a big dipper of their own. Zach Loveday coming down from Mike's Baylor Bears could be just enough to put this team over the top. So I like the direction that Sanford's heading. <laughs> yes, Mike's Baylor Bears, of course. How could we forget? Oh, 
You got to get out there, Jay. You know, you know, guys, I, I've been doing so good about making sure I was off mute. You know, and no disrespect here to the SoCon. My apologies, uh, gentlemen and ladies of the SoCon here. Um, I've been sort of thinking we were going to have some three and outs here already, and we haven't. So I'll be the bearer of bad news to the Bulldogs of the Citadel and let them know they're three and out this year in the SoCon. They lost their top two scores. They're going to be playing, probably playing six true freshmen and four sophomores. Like, no, hardly any upperclassmen to, you know, to lean on for that leadership. And uh, who who makes stops? Where are the stops going to happen here for the Bulldogs? I just don't feel like they've got the guns to do it on the defensive end. So, unfortunately, Citadel will be down there in the bottom tier going three and out. Mike, give me some better news about the UNC Greensboro Spartans, please. Yeah, I'm just going to keep the train rolling. Uh, I'm going with another first down, 14-4 and four last year. Uh, it starts with Langley. We talked about him, just a microwave-type score. Nine upperclassmen on this squad. And forward, uh, Mikel Brown-Jones, he's another solid piece. Uh, now, while they were 14-4 and four and challenging for the conference last year, I do think they take a little bit of a step back, um, but still going to be ultra-competitive, and I uh, just see them kind of fitting in the middle of this uh, conference here. Yeah, that's fair enough. Fair enough there. First down, respectable. Very respectable place to be here. Um, don't know if we could say the same thing about VMI, Eric, but am I wrong or we, we looking at some bad news here? No, you got, you got it spot on uh, VMI two and 16 in conference play last year. That is part of what earns them a three and out label this year, but also not one, not two, not three, not four, but five, their top five scorers from that two and 16 team are all gone. So just like Citadel, this team is going to be playing with a ton of freshmen, eight specifically, four more sophomores to top it off. You've got guard Deshaun Jackson. You know, he's he's someone that averaged seven rebounds for them from the guard spot. So maybe that is, you know, kind of the uh the the ray of sunshine there. But ultimately I think VMI is probably lining up for a pretty rough season. Is it really a bad thing when you go two and sixteen and then lose your top five scores? Like, I mean, <laughs> there's something to be said, I think, for sort of just cleaning house Quite and starting clean. over. Yeah, like, I mean, there, there could be something to be said for that. There, so we'll see if the Mike Ray of that. Hope, Jay Heinrich. <laughs> yeah, you know me, Mister Mister Positivity, Mister Sunshine over here. Damn right. Shout out VMI cadets for sure, and shout out to those Western Carolina Catamounts who I'm putting up in the old touchdown tier. Very, very dangerous team. Lots of talent. We spotlighted Woolbright, but guard Trey Jackson is also back after averaging nearly 16 points. Big, big upside coming in from Mercer transfer guard Kamar Robinson. Kamar Robertson. We're going to get it right there. Uh, Robertson with a lot of upside coming in from Mercer. So uh, going to give those catamounts a boost. This season, after going 10 and 8, and we're going to put them up in that top tier, the Touchdown Club. One more to go here to wrap up the SoCon tiers. How about Wofford, those Terriers, Mike? 8 and 10 last season. Is maybe a little, maybe a little misleading in terms of where they might end up this year? Yeah, going to have to fill out that three and out spot here. No seniors, six newcomers. These are going to be the uh, the, the puppy terriers this year. Uh, so hopefully get a ton of experience and you know be ready to go in the year uh, you know to come here. But uh, yeah, I just I don't know, man. I mean, there's a lot of juniors on the roster, so maybe they can put something together. Uh, you know, only Corey Tripp played significant minutes, um, so there's not a lot returning. I just see them taking another step back. I, I just don't feel like uh, they really have any any ceiling. But hey. You never know, you know, a couple of breakouts here or there that can jump them right into the mix, and that's what you love about college basketball. No doubt about it. You're looking there at the beautiful tiers for the SoCon up at the top. Little touchdown club, top tier for this conference for one and done. Furman, Samford, and Western Carolina. Second tier there, right in the middle, maybe looking to make a push to, to challenge by the end of the, of this, of the year. 
Chattanooga, East Tennessee State, which, by the way, we're not going to just forget that their coach has the best coach's name in the conference, and Brooks Savage, are you kidding me? Mercer and UNC Greensboro there in the middle tier. And, of course, down at the bottom going three and out on our football-themed on our football themed college basketball tiers, the Citadel, VMI, and of course, those Wofford baby puppy terriers, as Mike referred to them a little bit ago. Who else do you know that is doing 25 minutes on the SOCON? Nobody. And we're doing it here on One and Done, baby. Better believe that. We just did that. And we're thankful that you were here to hang out with us to watch it and take part as well. Be sure to make sure, be sure and make sure and just surely, sure, 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 you will like and subscribe. Do that thing, do your part in the Green Screens Media Universe, hit those notification bells as well. Follow the Twitter handles, follow the show page, do all that stuff so you don't miss anything that we're doing. Just like the old Southland Conference, a 10 team league. Another 10-team league, boys. Last year, Texas A&M Corpus Christi went 14-4 and and won the regular season title. And they also held up their end of the deal by winning the conference tournament, defeating Northwestern State in that title game, 75-71. to Texas A&M Corpus Christi also beat Southeast Missouri State in the playing game for the 16 seed. I, I guess that technically gives them a tournament win. I don't know. <laughs> Feel the 68. <laughs> Why do we, I mean, do we really look at that and say that Texas A&M Corpus Christi has a tournament win? I guess. I mean, the way I look at it, it's a play in to the tournament. So I don't think they're officially in the tournament until they win that game. Okay. So, er- Eric at the head know. nod. Are, are you buying uh, us? Eric's like, with it? A tournament win? Dude, I'm totally with it. That is that is <laughs> postseason play. It is a field of 68. Trophy. They they didn't, they didn't get a trophy for showing up. They didn't get to the dance by coming in second place in their conference tournament, like some teams who will remain nameless. Wasn't they made their, their way in. They won a game. Like, give the Islanders some love. There's, look, Corpus Christi needs needs its flowers, all right? Not a, not a whole lot to be happy about if you're going to Tamu, Corpus Christi. That's fair. Oh my that's gosh. fair. You should go to the aquarium that's down there sometimes. You know, it's, it's a really dope. nice aquarium that Corpus Christi nice. it is. Dope. It's real, real nice. Anyway. Oh yeah. Ooh. Let's not go down that route because I'll. Mm-hmm. All right, guys. This was not. This was the thirtieth ranked conference in the in the country last year. All right. So uh, they only had one in the top two hundred, which was Texas A and M Corpus Christi. So, um, Eric, when a conference is down like this, where do we look? for some headlines and some direction for, for where this conference is going to go. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's two big storylines with regard to the Southland. Um, the first has to do with coaching four new coaches that will be at the helm heading into the season. How will they leave their fingerprints on the conference? Probably the biggest splash is McNeese state adding former LSU coach will Wade. I'm going to see if he can tap into some of that talent for McNeese state, McNeese state, Maybe maybe lead them to a wire to wire victory in this conference. My heavy handed puns aside, Will Wade is uh, dipping down to the Southland because recruiting allegations and wiretaps cost him his job at LSU. But his career winning percentage as a D one head coach is still pretty impressive, sixty seven percent. So we'll see what Will Wade can get done for McNeese State. And the second area of note. This is the land of the JUCO transfer. 25-plus JUCO players that will be suiting up in one way or another here in the Southland. We've talked a lot about JUCO players, you know, throughout uh, a lot of these mid-major shows. You know, these are guys that have some pretty solid experience under their belt. Many of them are really just waiting for their opportunity, and apparently that opportunity is coming in the Southland for them. So with this many coming in, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if we see three, four, five of them really make a major impact for their program once they, you know, once they get into that expanded role. And it's it's going to be a fun storyline to watch, right? These are guys that usually come in with a chip on their shoulder, a little bit of a little bit of something to prove, and they have their opportunity to do it here in the Southland. 
Well, let's talk about some players that are just that are going to do just that and make an impact here. And those guys that we want to slap that franchise tag on for the Southland. Let's start with our guy Christian Shoemate forward from McNeese State, 6'7", 205. 15 points, almost 10 boards in 32.8 minutes. I like that walking double double <laughs> here. Um, and he did that on last, you know, last year, Mike, obviously. And he's one of the few holdovers from uh, that McNeese State roster last year. Big year. Um, and when you average nearly a double double and you're coming back for Will Wade, I feel like there's a little bit more upside that's untapped, right? So we'll see. We'll see how he does there. Second team Southland performance last year. He added the three ball to his game. He went from 20% to 34% last year. So you love that. Almost got to that uh, Jay Heinrich line of 35%. Just missed it. So we'll see if he can get over that, uh, you know, this year. And uh, he just gets to the free throw line a bunch. So those freebies, man, knocking those down. Uh, just love his game. You're kind of a wiry type player down low. But, uh, yeah, Shoemate's going to be in for a big year. I love the pairing with him and uh, Coach Will Wade for sure. Oh, I thought you were going to say the pairing with him and Wells. But Wade for sure, like having him as the coach. But we're going to talk about Shahada Wells here transferring in from TCU, a guard that we're familiar with down here in Big 12 country. Um, six points, two and a half assists, just over one steal a game in 17 minutes for TCU last season. After a few seasons in the Big 12, Eric decides to go back to the mid-major ranks. He does, and it, it, it makes sense as to why. You know, he started his career in the mid-major ranks. He played at UT Arlington, and at his time, during his time at UT Arlington, played, uh, played pretty well for himself. 17 points, almost four assists, 39% from three in about 30 minutes at, uh, at UT Arlington. So, you know, presumably he's looking to recapture some of that magic from the mid-major ranks. Uh, last year at TCU, he started nine games, but, you know, they're – there are a bunch of big time guards that are kind of sopping up all those minutes, namely Mike Miles Jr., right? So hard for him to, you know, really break through on such a talented TCU roster. But now that we look at his fit here for McNeese State, I mean, I I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, at the end of the season, we're saying he's one of, if not the, you know, most impactful transfers in this entire conference, especially if he's reaching back and getting up towards 30 minutes again, right? Like he he could be he could have a very full trophy case when it's all said and done if, if he's going to get that, that kind of run. Yeah, including uh, name of the year in the conference. And the only person that might challenge him is my guy, Bonky Marrying, the uh, forward from Houston Christian, 6'10", 240. 13 points per game, six boards in under 26 minutes. Made an immediate impact in this conference, Mike, after transferring in from UTEP. Well, this is a guy who just continues to grow his game. He's an impact player on both ends of the floor. Uh, you know, Coach uh, Joe Golding, when he was at UTEP, said that he had a, a, a very impressive uh, physical presence about him. And you're going to start to see that in his upper class years. So he needs to improve shooting the ball to become like an all-league type player. But, man, you love the name. You love the game. Uh, I just think there's going to be some good things coming from Marion here in his third year. Two more players here that we would slap the franchise tag on if we were forming a team in the Southland. And uh, next on the list is Jordan Johnson out of New Orleans, 6'1", 170-pound guard, 18 points, almost four dimes in 33.6 minutes. Like marrying Eric, another cat that made the most out of his transfer last year. Yeah, he comes in from Denver where he started in 25 of 30 games and presumes to you know plug right in and, and become a very impactful player this if if you're if you're drooling over you know mid 30s percentage this guy shot 48 percent from downtown and it's not like the random guy who you know gets open doesn't get covered you know just kind of waiting out there on the outside that's on seven attempts per game he's almost 50 percent on seven attempts it's just absolutely insane how how reliable he is from downtown and along with Shoemate, who we talked about earlier, I mean, he he probably comes in as one of the front runners for Conference Player of the Year. You can probably make a case for any of the guys that we've talked about um, to end up with that distinction at the end of the season. And um, let's let's round out our list here, Mike, with Roger McFarland, the guard from South Beach, Louisiana, 6'5", 205, like the size on McFarland for sure. 12.3 points, 
8.2 boards in 32 and a half minutes and another guy that took a massive leap in his sophomore year. I see a trend here. Um, <laughs> you know, we, we say he's a guard. He's more of a wing, uh, more of a three man shot 40% from three. So I don't quite get to get up to Eric's 48%. Uh, but McFarland took care of the ball last year too in 32 and a half minutes. Um, all this usage, only 1.3 turnovers per game. A ridiculous rebounder for his size. He's a guy that shows some ability to get others involved. I mean, don't sleep on this cat. I mean, these guys won 12 league games last year, and he was a massive part of that. He definitely was, and he joins our franchise tag list that also contains Christian Shoemate, Shahada Wells, Bonky Maring, and Jordan Johnson joining McFarland there on our franchise tag list for the Southland have you had enough Southland yet? I don't think so, because it's time for the tears, baby. We There's going that anywhere. excitement. We're not going anywhere. It's tears time, and not Giants fan, New York Giants fan tears like we talked about earlier. Is it fifty to zero yet? What are we doing? Are they, I think they call. I think they called it. <laughs> shout out, run rule. Is that right? <laughs> when we're crossing over, uh, collaborating on other sports, we might as well do it for Sunday night football. Like too. Run rule. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Exactly. Uh, let's go to those tears now for the Southland. Of course, keeping that football theme, touchdown, first down, and three and out. It's tough because, again, when you have a conference with just that doesn't have the overall talent in it, sometimes from year to year, some of that stuff can change just depending on, on the way the wind blows, honestly. But there's some talented – there are a couple of good teams – in this league that we're going to discuss. We'll tear them all. Let's start with the Houston Christian Huskies, Mike. 7-11 and 11 last year, and I'm not a guy that likes change, and I think I've only dished out first downs, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe I tossed out another one, but I'm going to go with another first down to at least start this conference right here. So, you know, Bonky's back, um, but they lost their two scoring guards, so you know, you're going to have to replace that. Five upperclassmen returning, and their ceiling, as Eric stated earlier, might depend on JUCO transfers. So, huh, man, 25-plus of these guys. We might have to wait until midseason to see, you know, how these tiers really stack up. It would be interesting to go back and, and take a look at all this to see if we have those four or five breakout players. Uh, mm -hmm. But for right now, we'll go with the first down for the Huskies. How about Incarnate Word? Where do you got those Cardinals, Eric? Man, this one hurts. My hometown Cardinals are going to be three and out. I mean, this is uh, this is this is absolutely a a program in transition. Six and twelve last year. This roster is absolutely decimated. I mean, just about everyone's gone. New head coach Shane Hireman obviously had to hit the portal hard to you know even field a roster, and because of that, he's got guys from all over, right? So, you know, when whenever that's the case, figuring out you know where the pieces fit. Trying to get these guys to buy into what you're what you're selling and 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 you know really commit to the program, determining you know who the leaders and who the alphas are on this team. I mean, you know, as I'm as I'm talking about this team, really what I'm doing is just listing off all the questions that Hireman's going to have to answer in his first year, and <laughs> I think it's going to be a bumpy one. That's tough, right? You're always looking for the guy as a coach when you have that roster turnover. Who's who's taking over? Who's stepping up? Who's going to be that guy? And and you're sort of in the back of your mind, you've sort of got a couple that you hope that's who it ends up being, right? So we'll see if it happens for Incarnate Word. I'm going to go with, uh, let's talk about the Lamar Cardinals here. 5-13 and 13 last season, so you might think, oh, they're going three and out again. I don't think so. I think they're going to be, well, let's put them in the first down tier. I think they're going to belong right in the middle of the pack here, mostly because they're bringing a ton of guys back, guard Chris Pryor, and forward Adam Hamilton averaged double figures last season. There's only one freshman on this roster. As opposed to some of these teams we talked about earlier in the night that are dealing with eight or nine guys that are freshmen that are going to have to end up playing in this rotation, only one freshman for the Cardinals. That's really going to pay off for them, and you just hope that Pryor and Hamilton can keep it pouring in and somebody else will step up as well. So let's put them in the first down tier, right smack in the middle, before we move on to those McNeese State Cowboys, Mike, nobody in that touchdown tier yet. Um, McNeese State only went six and twelve 
last season. But as you mentioned, bringing in Will Wade. Well, you've inspired me. I do not like change, but I'm going to change it up on this one. We're going to go touchdown right here. Will Wade, 67% career win percentage. Big time transfers coming in. We talked about Shahada Wells, but there's CJ Felder coming in from Florida. Uh, and Tavian Cullum from CSU Bakersfield. Mike Saunders from Utah. I mean, Shoemate's a, a conference player of the year type player. There's a clear favorites to me, uh, at least on paper. I just don't see another roster that has this much talent. It would not be surprised to see Will Wade do a couple of years here and find his way up to the uh, Power Five again, as long as he's not doing anything crazy. You can pay guys with NIL now, right, Jay? Yeah, no need to, no need for wires and wiretaps or anything of the sorts. Um, these are the sort of wins that I was talking about. When the winds blow, you Will Wade, and they, and and because of that, they blow you CJ Felder. And Mike Saunders, I mean, like, this is how a team can go from the bottom to the top uh, real quickly. And, and I'm not surprised to, to hear that, that you think that that's what's going to happen with the Cowboys here. Eric, what about those New Orleans privateers, however? Man, I think I'm going to have to follow suit with Mike and put them up here in the touchdown tier. This is a team that went 7-11 and 11 last year. I had the distinct play pleasure of talking about Jordan Johnson in our player spotlight. Again, a player who averaged 48% from downtown. But beyond him, past him, they've got forward Tyson Jackson. Uh, they've got Kali Wilson-Roos. You know, these are guys that played meaningful minutes for them. They averaged 20 points per game across the two of them. And like we talked about off the top, four new coaches in this conference – Mark Schlesinger is not one of them. Twelfth year here with the Privateers, you know, really got a good program. You know, got a got a nice foundation for these kids. Really like the direction that this program is heading, and I like the Privateers to be a tough out in the Southland. Again, a team that finished not one game under five hundred, a few games under five hundred last year. That looks to be uh, skyrocketing towards the top here of this conference. Uh, I want to take the Nichols Colonels here first down for me after going 11 and seven last season. We'll put them right in the middle. And that's a big part of that is because it's only upperclassmen on this roster. Like they, they lost a ton of guys, a lot of their production from last season, but their portal hall was not that shabby at all. So being able to replace some of that talent that they lost, um, Micah Thomas, Gonna be someone to pay some attention to as a breakout player for for Nichols, but um, don't think that they have enough on this roster to make uh, uh, another step forward and to take a jump into the top tier, uh, the touchdown tier for us today. What about those Northwestern State Demons after going thirteen and five last year, Mike? Um, again, is this a is this a situation where from one year to the next things could just drastically change? Yeah, um, this is a decimated roster. Coach Gibson, he uh, headed off to Austin P and took four of his players, uh, actually the conference player of the year, uh, with him. So, yeah, we're going to have to load up here. And we got nine JUCO players coming in. So I don't know where this is going to end up. I'm going to go three now. Uh, new head coach Rick Cabrera, tough job in year one. But, man, you know that – there could be some ceiling here. We just got to see how these Juco guys perf can perform and then, you know, really setting up a foundation for next year. But until we see something, guys, you know, middle of the season right now, preseason, we're going to go three and out for sure. It's the type of job that if Cabrera really turns it around quickly, he might not be there long. And we see that a lot in this conference, right? We talk about the coaching turnovers and, and if Cabrera can, like obviously 13 and five last season, but again, when you just lose, basically what amounts to everybody um <laughs> it's tough it's tough so we'll see what coach Cabrera can do eric three more teams here on our tiers and i'm going to start with you with the southeast louisiana lions are they going to be roaring in this conference or will we have a little just like meow down you know well, what should we expect from those lines now these Lions are going all the way up 12 and 6 in league play last year. We talked about Roger McFarlane earlier. He was part of our franchise tag spotlight for good reason, but he is joined by guard Nick Caldwell, guy that was 
super productive in limited time, a guy that we would all like to see get a bit more run as we head into the upcoming season. They also transfer in guard Carlos Paez from Austin P. He's going to make a significant impact for them. And, you know, Coach David Kiefer heading into year five feels like he's he's hitting all the right buttons. He's he's twisting all the right knobs. He's pulling all the right levers. A lot of things working in the right direction for these Southeast Louisiana Lions. I don't know if Carwell is going to get that playing time or not, but it would make a lot of sense for him to uh, for Kiefer to, to to play him a little bit more. So we'll see what happens with McFarland, Cardwell, Paez, um, you know, we'll see what happens here with the Lions. Uh, two more here, Texas A&M Commerce Lions, nine and line. <clears throat> I'm excited talking about these Lions. Another Lions. What's with all the Lions here? Let me take a let me take a drink real quick before we roar about these other Lions. Hey, I got a I got a quick thing though. Some of these teams oh, doesn't make a, some of this doesn't make a lot of sense. Like. Houston Christian Huskies, like what? What are, what are we doing there here? Is. Some, some some the lions H is the alliteration. Like, what are we doing? The Louisiana Lions. Are there lions in Texas A and M? Com is that in college near College Station too, or is that Commerce? Is that it's like is, is that yeah. mean it's in Commerce? Yeah. Where is Commerce? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's next to Bryant. So yeah, <laughs> I'm pretty sure there are lions there. <laughs> Weird. Either way, either way, I'm going to talk about them. Um, we'll put them 99 last season. Let's put them right smack in the middle again in that first down tier after losing their two leading scorers. Um, they do return about half the roster, including Kalen Williams. So again, this is a team that'll be competitive night in and night out, depending on the situation, what's going on. They'll probably lose some. They shouldn't and win some. They shouldn't. One of those kind of teams, Pro probably another 99 season for the, for these lions, Go from Lions to Islanders, which I guess at least makes a little bit more sense <laughs> than the Commerce Island Lions. Boys. But the yeah, the Island Boys uh, out there in Corpus Christi. What do you got, a Mike? Oh boy, fourteen and four last year. Steve Lutz, head coach, is gone, and so are all the core pieces. We're gonna go three and out to end the tiers. Worst Unfortunately, worst. yeah, worst. To, yeah, first to worst. Sheesh. Yeah. I don't know. There's heavy JUCO investment here. Six players coming over. So, <laughs> like I said, guys, like we're just gonna have to see, wait and see, right? We don't know how these guys are gonna adjust. We don't know what it's gonna look like on some of these rosters. So we see it on the floor. So I'd love to come back to this conference midseason and kind of kind of update where we're at with everything. Who's gonna take a step forward? Uh, big question marks here, and and you love to see it. That's why we love the game. But yeah, we're gonna go ahead and go three and out to end the uh, end up the. He's tears here. Uh, you hate, hate to end on a sour note, but that's where we will end up with those Islanders of Texas A&M Corpus Christi as well. Sharing that tier with Northwestern State and Incarnate Word. We're also going to move up to the first down tier. We've got Houston Christian, Lamar, Nichols, and Texas A&M Commerce. Somehow the Lions. And then also up at the top, that touchdown tier. Touchdown, McNeese State. New Orleans, and the real Lions, I guess, the Southeast Louisiana ones in the Southland to wrap up the tiers, to wrap up the show. Gentlemen, another great one today with the SoCon and the Southland. Mike, anything to wrap us up before we head out? No, um, you know this is going to be uh, this is going to be interesting to see how this shakes out again. I think we only have two more double feature previews uh, coming up, so wow, that's uh, it's going to be weird not talking about you know a couple of conferences at the same time. I think next up we have the uh, Summit and Sun Belt, and then we got the Swack Whack uh, attack. So we'll be we'll be doing both of those. But yeah, looking forward to it and looking forward to talking about some power conferences. But uh, no slight to the uh, to the teams that we're going to talk about. So. Swack whack attack, Eric. <laughs> I don't know if you can top that, but you can try. Man, I don't think I can. Like that that is some that is some top level branding that I am not prepared to match. What I <laughs> what I will say is as we uh as we get into uh you know some of the major conferences, we uh we we no longer will be able to lean on our crutch of saying who else is giving you 25 minutes on the Southland, on the SOCON, but the point persists, right? Like this is information that you can come back to as we're 40 days out, as we're 25 days out, right? 
You can go back and see the things that we're talking about in these mid-majors conferences and kind of get an understanding of how, you know, we're sort of evaluating and looking at the high major teams, right? So it all, it all weaves together into a picture for the upcoming season, which again, two months away, less than two months away. I can't believe it. This tangled web we weave here on one and done of college basketball information. And we do it with, of course, two of the best in the business at MC Holland 34 on X. That is the OG money, Mike El Capitan himself, the captain of the green screens media ship. That's Mike Holland. And of course, Eric, the blue, the Baron of Bread of Green Screens Media, Mr. Eric Romoff. Find him on those Twitter streets at Fantasy Nav. I am the conductor of the aforementioned Green Screens Media train. Find me in Elon's hellhole at Dr. William Cannon. I actually put out a poll today and got some decent numbers on that. So go over there to at Dr. William Cannon. Let me know how much of your fab budget you're willing to spend on Gus Edwards. Since we talked, we had some football crossover today. Make sure you do that. Make sure you follow me on Twitter. These guys at the real Napier for our guy Chris doing big things. At one and done CVB for her, the show page. At get green screens for all the green screens media information you can handle. Do not forget to hit those like and subscribe buttons. Turn on that notification bell so you don't miss anything we're doing here. Have a nice day. Let's get this bread, baby. Thanks for stopping by the office. Get your fantasy prescription by subscribing to the channel and checking out drrodo.com. And until the next visit, be well and take care.